bitch, learn the dungeon, right? If you if you don't know how to get around the dungeon, your ass doesn't belong in here. Good morning, Freeport. It's 9 a.m. and it's time for the news. <laughs> now, there are some people saying that the server needs to be more casual because, well, they're more casual now. I just read something on Reddit from months ago and it, it really irked me. And I've been guilty of saying this myself and I don't agree with it anymore. Imagine that. I changed my mind on something. People hate when you do that, by the way. They're like, eh, hey, you're... Because they think you're unstable. Or you're just not somebody who sticks to their convictions. No, that's because people analyze information, and when they get more information, they upgrade. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, well, I was mistaken about that. Or, you know, sometimes it's just... It's, 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 it's not objective, right? <laughs> Things are subjective. If you're going to bring back a game, do it the way that the developers who made the game wanted you to play the game. And the only argument really against that was, well, that's not so feasible anymore because there's not going to be 2,500 people. Fair enough. But at the same time, are you willing to sacrifice the game and go back to what killed MMORPGs? Well, at least the old school, original MMORPG formula in the first place? Do we want to compromise? Just how much do we want to compromise? I seen some people getting a little radical and they're like, well, I don't have time. So therefore a boon. And, and then somebody's like, yeah, that's a good idea. If we, if we scale the game down to where everything, you know, there's more, there's better drop rates. Uh, you get super sow. If you, if you happen to be somebody who has sow, because everybody should have sprint and well, we don't want to make sow redundant. So we'll just make sow super sow. And then, but no, no, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Person on reddit from months ago <laughs> i don't like that i don't like that people want to do that why because what that says to me is i want to mold this thing around me i'm not i'm not that person i was anymore and therefore i think the game should compromise and the developers who made the game their vision should be compromised because i'm older now dang it and i don't have eight hours a day to play you see the problem with that so, it's one of those things. It's like, do we do we keep the game along the original developer's design, or do we tailor it to to fit ourselves? Because well, we're doing that anyway. We're bringing it back anyway. So why not just make it? Well, when you that's a slippery slope. I'm gonna warn people, man, that when you start to compromise on one thing before you know it, well, you start to say to yourself, well, we compromised on that, so we can, you know, this is not bad. What if we just make another server? Actually, we should make another server. That's what we can do. And then we can split the fan base that's already very small in half. You see the slope? You see the danger? You see the pitfalls in that? I don't think that's a good thing. This is just my input, all right? I'm not the authority on EQOA. I don't want people going crazy. This is my opinion. <laughs> but I really, really, really don't think that we should do that. Because if you do open up another server, like you, like I said, you're splitting up the fan base. And you might say to yourself, well, those people won't play then. They'll just play something else. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, they'll be talking a big game for a while. I don't got time for that. Yeah. Game's been gone a long time. And then all of a sudden, videos start popping up and people are playing it again. And now, now it doesn't, you know, it doesn't... What I was saying before, you know, maybe I do have time. You know, even if it's just a couple of hours, maybe, you know, exactly. You don't give them the option, dude. Don't even give them the option to have that. And they'll come around. They will. They will. And you know they will because you know a million times you said, I'm not buying that game because you didn't like it and you bought it anyway. This is EQOA, baby. You ain't getting this anywhere. This formula, you're not finding it anywhere. It's right here. And there's a reason why you loved it. Oh, well, I loved it because I was younger and I had more time. I, I understand what you're saying. Part of me gets that, but I don't. I changed my mind on that. I don't think that we should do that. It's funny. There's an interview. And I love this interview. It's Jeff Butler talking about Brad McQuaid and how Brad was hardcore about stuff. And the way he spoke on how Brad felt about dungeons and maps and all that stuff, just take a listen to this for a moment. Um, you know, Brad played, uh, you know, he, he played a, a specific mud back in the day. I think it was Toral Mud. Um, I'm sure 
Bill Fisher actually remembers the name of the mud because he played in that mud with Brad, right? Um, Brad's hope was to realize a game like Toral Mud, which was set in Forgotten Realms, in 3D, right? And there were certain aspects of Toral Mud gameplay, the 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 sense of not uh, yeah, the sense of having to memorize how to get from one point to another, right? That every single person had a you know had to keep the map, as it were, in their head, right? Mm. You had to know how to get from from Nariac D to to you know uh, another area of the world, and if you didn't know, well then you you have to ask someone, right? Because there's not a map, right? You you have to learn, you have to explore the world and make it your own, right? Because there is no uh, there's no way to cheat, right? There there shouldn't be. A, a website that you can go to and look at a 2D map of the zone. Bitch, get your ass in the game and, and learn how to get out of the area that you're at, right? You don't ask me for a damn dungeon map or a freaking mini map in the corner of the screen. Bitch, learn the dungeon, right? If you, if you don't know how to get around the dungeon, your ass doesn't belong in here, right? That, that is just one fragment of what Brad wanted to be, you know, a foundational element in the game that he that he wanted, right? And, and he, I mean, it was non-negotiable, right? That he had to have that in a game. Right? Yeah. The game, the game couldn't be a success for him uh, unless it included elements along those lines. Yeah. So. <clears throat> And Bill just mentioned wanted you to live in uh, that world. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I was going to ask: is it was it more rooted in the challenge or the immersion? Um, I'm assuming more the latter. I'm I'm assuming that a lot of it was the latter, because Brad as a player was much less about he was much per less personally about the challenge, right? Um, much more about feeling that he was an active component of the world and that every aspect of the what the world was delivering was part of the reward right mm. like why would i hand you a map why would i hand you a map if i gave you a map i would be screwing you right i would be screwing you out of the satisfaction of learning that you don't walk into that little alcove that has a tree in it in uh uh you know in this dungeon otherwise you'll fall into the you know the false floor that's in the middle of the tree and you'll be down in a deeper area of the dungeon and you'll die yeah right if i gave you a map you just make a little mark on it that says don't go there right and i'd be screwing you right i mean i'm cheating you out of this knowledge of the world that uh, is your reward for exploration and cooperation with your fellow players right and you know there's an aspect of truth, uh, of unquestionable truth in that, um, but it broaches the argument of that game being a, let's say, 250,000 player game and a more, uh, let's say, information friendly game being a multi billion player game, right? And that's where. Uh, you know, Brad's focus was in this Toral Mud derived immersive world. My focus was more in the, uh, yeah, well, I want to build a better World of Warcraft meets Minecraft meets EverQuest. <laughs> He's right. He's absolutely right. If you don't have the I'm sorry, if you don't have the stones, right? If you don't have the sack to be in the dungeon, then take your ass home. <laughs> then get out of the dungeon. There's the door. Bye. Bye. You don't get the rare loot. Why? Because it's not accessible and it never was accessible to everybody. You had to bust your ass for it. People got into arguments. They fought with each other. Guilds were disbanded. 
the rose the rose colored glasses they're they're a thing where people they choose to remember all the good times and they don't remember the bad some people dwell on the bad things and they don't they want to cut them out completely well when you cut out the bad you you, you got world of warcraft all the parts that you don't want to have to do oh i don't want to have to go do this i don't have to deal with that i don't have to run here i just want to zip around and on a flying mountain, I want to run. I want to run at five thousand times speed, so I don't have to worry about you know. No, you can just go play World of Warcraft, dude. It's still there. It still exists. And if we cater to you and we make you a server and you split the server in half, what is that doing to our starting cities? When we want people to start with and play with from level 10, 20, 30, 40. We don't just want a bunch of level 60s who zerg straight through the game and now everybody's doing this number over here. I remember that, man. I remember it like it was yesterday and it was painful to me. I actually seen a video from somebody who was just as frustrated as I was. And hopefully my dude doesn't try to strike the video. I don't know him. People can get a little weird, but here's a little clip. I want you to take a look at this clip too. Isn't that sad? That was me. Walking up to people that were AFK. I'm like, you're a poopy head. Man. I hate you right now. <laughs> because you're just... You, all, all of you people, you're all dual boxers. And you're all standing AFK. And I remember when this game had people in it, man. Well, you can't really do anything to change that. Right? That's going to happen. That's an inevitability. The servers are going to die off. Especially when there's not new content coming out. Which is why you need to turn that anger towards the people who didn't bring that out. But then again, well, not really, right? Because it's kind of silly. <laughs> if, if I sat here and said I wasn't still salty at Smedley and, and, and um, Yeah, a little bit. I still go, why? Why didn't you just put it on PS3? Why didn't you bring out Underfoot and charge 30 or $40? It would have been huge. And you guys know it would have been because people were Tolkien crazy at the time and they were World of Warcraft crazy at the time and consoles had nothing. This would have perfectly fit that bill. And I think it would have taken off and the developers have said so. They're like, yeah, man, if it was on PS3, smash hit right out of the park. Not to go too off on a tangent, but you mentioned EQOA. If there's a game I could bring back with today's hardware, that'd be it. Because that game was literally a year or two too early to work it was i mean you think about people had to buy that little module to go on their ps2 so they could dial into the game if you put that on a today's framework i uh, that that game was so good and so far ahead of its time it's crazy i would love to bring that one back yeah i mean it would, a lot of people come in here asking about it sorry tom so it we was... had 
we had an engineer on Vanguard uh, in the early days, uh, AR. I don't know if you guys remember AR. AR. Yes. I remember AR. Uh, I worked with him again, actually, on Rift. Um, okay. Now, but uh, he was a huge EQOA player. I always remember that. Uh, so he was kind of starstruck by Amanda back in the day because she had worked on it, right? Like, mm -hmm. and Lawrence and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, he would he would always still reference even on Rift. He would reference some of the EQA stuff. So it would have blown up. So it makes me it, it just makes me sick when I look at how this game could have taken off and it didn't. And yeah, people are going to burn out pretty quick because there's not a huge amount of end game here. We do have the CM thing, though, right? So, you know, the game was... It just had a lot going for it when you consider it only had one expansion, and there was so much to do even outside of that. But, yeah, it's just one of those things. I don't want to see people rush to end game, AFK and Freeport, and that's all she wrote. I don't think we'll be able to do time lock progression servers. If we could, that would be amazing. And then I think I'd be a little bit more in support of turning up the xp a bit but boon like where people i'm hearing stories that people got from like level one all the way up to 60 in like 12 hours dude that's ridiculous i think boon was over here right you got it from like somewhere over here. i can't read i don't know i don't even think i was around for boon we had the luck man and it was good enough all pill both ways in the snow anyway <laughs> this is gonna be controversial i want to hear from you guys get down in the comment section make sure you leave a like and make sure you click the notification bell because I'm making videos again, man. I'm making lots of EQA videos. We're turning 20 this year. <laughs> well, in a few days it'll be this year. Anyways, God bless. I thank you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. And I'm going to calm my cats down now because they're tearing up the kitchen. Bitch, learn the dungeon.